Forrester, longtime honcho for the gamers and Multiman Publishing. The current installment of Metal on Metal I'm bringing you today is the first part of a series of videos to introduce you to the Grand Tactical series. Specifically, we're going to look at version 2.0 as expressed in the most recent game in the series, The Greatest Day. Hopefully you've heard of this game already, and some of you may be owning it already. Some may have seen it and looked at the price tag and wondered, geez, can I spend over 200 bucks for one game? My answer to that question is yes, you certainly can and you should. This is a wonderful game. It's a wonderful system. The one hesitation I had getting involved in this system, of course, you know, I know the Tactical Combat series, the Standard Combat series, many of the games that the gamers put out. Do I really want to get into another one? And really, do I have the brain power necessary to plow through the rule books? Well, it turned out I did, but the process could have been made a lot easier if I'd had a video series such as this to get me in the door and sort of have a basic understanding of the game system uh, rather than have to abstract it out of the rules. So my goal here is really to get you playing if you have a copy of it and if you're just looking from the outside in thinking whether wondering whether you should get this game or not hopefully this will help you to make that decision so in this first video we're going to look at a summary of the grand tactical series sort of what it is we're going to look at the maps and counters from the greatest day and then we're going to get into the heart of the game and that is the command system as expressed in command points and dispatch points these were things that weren't clear to me when I first picked up the rules and took me a few reads to understand. Then we'll look at formation chits, formations or uh, regiments and brigades, the way the game is basically organized. This is the group of units that act together when their formation chit is pulled out of the chit cup. And we're also going to look briefly at units and what they can do, the kind of actions that they can take. There will be four more parts, as I see of this video, covering movement, combat, and some other things. This is to give you an overview of how the whole system works from a command point of view. First of all, what is the Grand Tactical series? It's sort of between a tactical combat and a more operational level game, hence Grand Tactical. Two hours per turn, company size units. Uh, the map, at least in the greatest day, is 500 meters per hex. The heart of this game, as I mentioned, is a chit pull system. All formations will have their chits in a cup at the beginning of a turn. You draw randomly, and units attached to that formation can activate and do things when their chit is pulled. When they're all done, you put the chit aside and draw a new chit. The, because of the sort of shorter ranges, uh, smaller hexes here, you ha do have ranged fire and a lot of assault combat. Units have zero to two steps, depending, two being sort of normal. And in addition, they can take what are called cohesion hits, which is cumulative damage that can be removed at the end of time. But once you get past two cohesion hits, further cohesion hits will actually damage the unit permanently. Here is a look at one of the maps in The Greatest Day. As you can see, the center dots have various colors. I think it's a very nice point of this game is that you don't have to argue about what hex type it is if there are multiple terrains in it. The images make it look nice and make it attractive, but it really is the hex dot that determines what the terrain type is. You see that they're all various colors here. So you have to train yourself to get used to looking at the hex in order to understand the terrain type. In addition, you will see here there are crests and uh, what look like elevations. This is actually sort of a different form of crest, so you don't actually have elevation for measuring line of sight in this. You use the, the, the lines, and I'll talk about that when we discuss combat and range combat in particular. Here is a quick look at the terrain effects chart. I will not elaborate on this to you. Simply to point out that each type is correctly or is, is um, carefully described in terms of movement point costs for the three different types of movers, leg, wheel, and tract. Nothing shocking or new there to an experienced gamer. You will see that there are two movement point costs for each hex. The first is for a unit that is normally deployed, and the second is if the unit is organized in column. Column is a formation, in other words, a counter you can place on a unit to show this in column. That definitely speeds up movement, and roads are much faster when you're in column. The problem, of course, with being in column is that you are much more vulnerable to attacks. You don't attack so well, and as we'll look about in a bit, in stacking, you can only have one unit in column in a hex. A unit in column cannot enter the hex with another unit in column, so it's much harder to move your units around when they're in column in terms of stacking. Here is a look at a unit fire ratings. You'll see that the colors are employed here. There are various colors to indicate what type of firing unit it is. 
firing uh, rating in range. This is a close or an assault rating, which is used in assault combats. Some units, just a few, not that many, will have a blue box here that shows an air defense rating. This is an anti-aircraft unit, so obviously it has one. There are defense ratings. These go, uh, at least in my experience with this game, anywhere from plus two, which is very bad. You want a low defense number. There might even be a plus three out there somewhere. Down to minus four, and there might even be a few minus fives for the German King Tigers or such. The defense ratings will subtract from attack, so you want a negative value, if at all possible. In the upper right, you have the quality rating. This comes into play all the time, so a quality rating of seven is really, really good. A uh, quality rating of two or one is very poor. Movement allowance, infantry, move four. So this gives you sort of an idea, and movement types are also indicated in color. This stripe here will indicate affiliation of a unit, and the designation abbreviation is there as well. Now, speaking of formations, there are really three different groups of formations in terms of formations that each counter, each unit belongs to. There are divisions in this game. Those are indicated by the color of the counter. This white color indicates the 716th division. This light blue is the German 352nd. This maroon red color is the British 6th Airborne. Gray indicates that it belongs to no, it's none. It doesn't have a, unit, uh, it doesn't have a divisional affili affiliation. There are only a few units like this. The red number for the quality rating also indicates that it is an independent unit. So it won't activate with its division and does have a formation that it normally goes with. The commandos are a special exception in that they have a color, they belong to a unit, but they don't actually have a normal division card and they don't track uh, different kinds of points, which I'll talk about in just a second. They have their red number that shows that they're independent. So they're, they're a little different. There's a chit in the cup that activates all of them, but when they're activated, they act independently. You will also see leader counters, which have two values uh, in addition to their, their color stripe. The color indicates the division they belong to. This is the third Canadian. The green stripe, it will indicate their formation, which is a brigade. They have a command range, which is a range in hexes that units can be from this in order to remain in command during the turn, during their activation. And attachment rating, which allows them to attach independent units that don't have a division, well, they don't have a formation that they belong to. So what do I mean by that? Let's back up again. Divisions are the largest organization of units indicated by the counter color. Each division will have between one and three formations that belong in that. And these formations, it depends on the actual division. These are generally regiments or brigades. The affiliation of the formation is indicated by the color stripe. So here we have light blue. This is the 352nd division. And this green stripe indicates it all belongs to a specific regiment of that. When we see units with a white or a black stripe, that means they belong to the division, but they do not belong to a formation inside that division. That is, they can be attached, or they can work with various formations inside that division. That's what this attachment rating is for. Every time that this formation, the 8th Canadian Brigade, activates, all units that have this color stripe that belong to this division are active and they can they can each conduct an action. In addition, this leader can designate six independent units that have a white unit identification that belongs still to the same division, and those can also conduct an activation. Uh, if you think about this for a minute, you'll realize that these sort of independent units are quite handy because if they're in the command range of multiple formations, they can be used multiple times a turn, whereas generally, Anything with a simple stripe will activate, well, it does activate during its division activation shit, but normally it's able to do actions that are interesting during its formation activation. So we have divisions, we have the formations, and then we have some independent units. You can also see the dots here indi indicate the number of steps in each unit. Two dots is a two-step unit, one dot is one step, and no dots means it's a sort of a zero-step, very light unit, and they're very easy to kill. Each turn, you have a cup where all the chits are located that uh, can then be pulled in whatever random order they come out to show which at units actually conduct actions during a turn. That was a long sentence. How is this different than other chit pull games? The main difference to me, besides the fact that the cup is, needs to be big to hold all these counters, all these activation chits, is that not all chits are automatic, automatically put into the cup each turn. Some are, 
but the major but the majority of them are not. So what kind of chits do we have that go in the cup? First of all, we have divisional chits. And if we look over this list of chits, where are some division chits? I'm looking around. Here's one, the 50th division, division activation. Here's the 352nd, 21st Panzer, 12th Panzer. When that chit is pulled, every unit in that formation gets to do something, but they can't do a lot of really important actions like attacking and they can't move near the enemy. So think of these as more organizational moves, more um, sort of behind the scenes, getting things organized type of stuff. So when a division's pulled, you can do that in the division shits, always go in the cup. Formation shits don't always go in the cup. You have to purchase them with things called dispatch points every turn in order to use them. Direct command shits do go into the cup, and they don't activate any particular formation. They don't activate a division, but you can use them to conduct micro actions with individual units, uh, certain ones, during your turn, and I'll get into that in a little bit. There is a Royal Marine chit in this game. When it's pulled, all of them get to act. There's a naval chit, which is when invasions happen and when naval guns get to fire, and invention as well. All right, let's get to command. You have two kinds of points to help you do things with your units in this game. You have dispatch points and you have command points. And the difference between these two took me a while to grok back when I was learning this. Each division has its own dispatch point and command point number. And you can keep track of these. They go up to 19. In the game, every division has its card. And you keep track of your dispatch points and command points for every division separately on its card. You use dispatch points to purchase formation chits that then go into the activation cup or the, the cup and can be pulled each turn. So they're the larger kind of point. Dispatch points will activate everybody that belongs to a particular formation and that is usually somewhere between, I would just say 10 to, to 18 units. Command points are for doing Command points are for doing specific unit actions. When a formation activates, each unit in its formation can do one action. But you can use command points to do an extra activation if you really need it. Also, during a divisional activation, you're very limited in what your units can do. And you can use command points to add to their abilities to do something more interesting during a divisional activation. So command points are the tactical points you use in one particular situation to help one particular unit do something. Dispatch points are used at the turn level to put chits in the cup in order for you to do a lot of stuff with everybody in that whole formation. At the beginning of each turn, every division has the option, if uh, the player wants, to take some of its saved up command points and to convert them into dispatch points. This is usually a good idea because when we think about it, one command point can get one unit to do one action, whereas uh, two dispatch points can activate an entire formation and everybody, all units in that formation can do one action when their chit is pulled. And if you've got 10, 15, 20 units in that formation, that's a very efficient use in terms of getting stuff done. So dispatch points are efficient in the broad scheme of things. Command points are great when you have a particular tactical situation you need help with. Here is a look at a division activation card. You can see a track up to 19. You will have a counter for each of your command points and dispatch points. In addition, over here, each division has a command rating and a dispatch rating. These are used in the process of trying to get new command points and new dispatch points every turn. If we look at this image here, this is from the Vassal module, so you see the command points and dispatch points for three divisions being displayed at once. That's how it's handled there. And you can see that uh, this is at the beginning, I think, right around the beginning of the game. And the um, third Canadians are all saved up on command points. They're ready to go. Dispatch points, they didn't have so many of them. And that will be a pretty common look. Usually you will have more command points saved up than dispatch points. I mentioned that you gain dispatch points and command points every turn. Well, you might. You have the possibility of gaining them. At the beginning of a scenario, you have some, as we just looked at at, the, at that Vassal screenshot. Normally, each division gets to gain new dispatch points or attempt to gain new dispatch points and command points when its division chit is pulled during a turn. 
So when, say, the 50th division pulls the chit, it activates. Right at the beginning of the activation, you get to make two rolls. One, and these are with a, a d10 that goes from 0 to 9. You get to roll for new command points, and you get to roll for new dispatch points. For command points, you roll the die, have the result, round it down, add it to the command rating, and that is the new number of command points you get to add to the track, up to 19 max. If you roll more than 19, you lose any excess. So if we go back to here, we notice that the third division has a six command point rating. So if the die roll were a seven, for instance, we will take seven, have it to three and a half, round it down to three, add it to six, and you would gain nine command points for that division. If that division were to roll a one instead of a seven, one would be halved to 0.5, rounded down to zero, and you only gain six. Basically, every turn with command points, you will gain your command rating plus zero to four additional command points as indicated by the die. What about dispatch points? It's completely different. You get a lot fewer of these things. You roll a d10, which is really, like I said before, is zero to nine. On a zero, you add one plus one dispatch point. If you roll your dispatch rating or less, you add an additional plus one. If you roll a number equal to or less than the current saved up dispatch points, you get another plus one. So in actuality, if you roll a zero, you're gonna get plus three because you automatically roll equal or less to any dispatch rating. And also, even if you have zero points, you've rolled equal to it. So with the roll of zero, you get plus three dispatch points. And if you roll a 9, forget all this above, you get minus 1, and that's the way it goes. That means that normally uh, dispatch points gained a turn, depending on if you have some saved up or not, will be, you know, say 1 you know, on average. You can get it if you save up more dispatch points, you might be able to do better than that. But that's probably about average. So uh, you see here you're rolling a lot more command points than dispatch points. Now, how do you spend these guys? At the beginning of a turn... When you're doing, after you've done cleanup from the previous turn and before anything is started, you're, you need to decide or you need to put the chits in the activation cup um, in order to them to be pulled during the, the brunt of the turn. This is a time when you can buy formation chits. Those are those brigades and, and uh, regiments that belong to divisions. You can spend two dispatch points to add a formation chit that you have available to you to the cup. You can decide that, well, that's just too expensive. I'll spend one dispatch point, and then you save the chit to put in the cup the next turn. So it's delayed by a turn before it gets to act. You can also spend a dispatch point to um, form an artillery park, and we'll talk about artillery uh, when we get to the combat and such. So all that to say, it takes some organizational points to create artillery parks. Now, command points are not spent at the beginning of the turn, although, as I mentioned before, you can spend two command points to buy one dispatch point if you wish during this point. Command points are spent during an activation, divisional or a direct shit activation or formation activation in order to do things with your units. So here's what the cup looks like. This is at the beginning of the campaign scenario. This is, these are the different things that will go into the cup. Well, I, not quite exactly the first turn. These airborne formations don't go in, but details, details. Here are some divisional chits here. Here are formations that belong to those divisions. If you're looking carefully, you'll notice that some of these colors don't match the division color. What's up with that? These are attached brigades. Most divisions can have one brigade attached to that and you keep track of that on your division chart. You also have some of these other chits down here that are always put in the cup every turn. You don't have to purchase these. So for the beginning of the turn, you'll take all these division chits and then all these other chits in here, you'll put them in the cup and then players have the option of purchasing these things to use that turn for two dispatch points or to be used the next turn for one dispatch point. Speaking of command points, what can you do with all that? I'm not going to belabor this here. This is a chart that shows all the different things that units can do. Don't get freaked out. It's actually a lot easier than that. Essentially, when a formation is activated, a normal formation, and we'll look at this here during formation activation, Units can move, they can conduct engineer actions, they can fire, they can assault, or they can rally. That's essentially what they do. This here is just the different kinds of movement they can do, and these are the different kinds of engineer actions they can do. We'll talk about that in a later video. If you look carefully here, divisional activation, units cannot move into an enemy fire zone. A fire zone is basically where the enemy can shoot. 
So that shows that they're not quite as good as regular formation activation. They can't approach the enemy too well. They cannot fire and they cannot assault. So divisional activation is great for organizational moves, for administrative moves, but not as a combat move. Normal formation activation is when everybody can do everything normally. Now you see here we have second actions listed. What is a second action? A unit can spend a command point to conduct a second action after it has done its first action. So the one exception I will point out there is you cannot do the same action over. So if uh, a unit activates during formation activation, decides to fire, its second activation cannot be another firing action. It has to be an assault or a rally or a move or some such thing. Quite handy to have these. That's why you want to save up your command points. Also, if you want to move into an enemy fire zone during the divisional activation, for instance, you can't do it during the first activation, but you can spend a command point to do it during the second activation. This direct command is what happens when the direct command shit is pulled, and you can use it for units that belong to a formation. You can't use this with independent units, unfortunately. So that's uh, the basic kinds of activations that happen during these things. Now we're going to spend some time to do sort of a live action based on some games I have going. Here we are at the end of a turn, say in the afternoon of June 6th-ish. And I'm using the Vassal module that you're looking at here. On the left we have all the used activation chits for this turn. And the last chit pull was the 3rd Canadian. One thing about the chip pull system is that the last chit pulled actually doesn't act that turn. It becomes the first chit for the next turn. So that's why it's sitting here by itself. And over here we have sort of a list of the different um, dispatch and command points that are available to these units. So to make the new cup, first of all we're going to take all the division chits. Bear with me, we're kind of going to kind of walk through this together. We'll take the division, the Royal Marines. So I'm looking for all the division chits. Here, and there's a third division, the naval chit also goes every turn. So these are all gathered, the direct command chits as well. I'm scanning here, and I think we have all of them. I'm going to place these in the cup, uh, return to coffee mug, mug cup, whatever. This here is a chit. I, we can't peek at it because I'm not logged in as the right thing, but we will place that. It was purchased last turn for use this turn. And if I were logged in as that player, that will also get put into the cup for this turn. These chits here were used, and if we want to use them again, we have to purchase them. So I'm going to pull them all off, grouping them roughly. There, that will go with that one. We'll put some Canadians over here. There's another Canadian. These belong to the 50th, and then the German 21st Panzer will go over here. So we're pulling these chits out. And in order to use them for this next turn, they have to be purchased. So let's take a look at our command points and dispatch points and together decide what's going to happen. Now, there is hardly anything in the 3rd Infantry Division. They burn them up. And unfortunately, they didn't get pulled this turn. They were the last shit, so they don't get to add any command points or dispatch points this turn. Let this be a lesson to everyone. If you burn your dispatch and command points down and then your division is pulled last, you won't get to roll for new command points and dispatch points. So 3rd Canadian can purchase no counters this turn. They don't have any dispatch points, and they could convert two command into one dispatch point, but they only have one command. So they're stuck. So these Canadian counters here, these activation markers, cannot be purchased this turn. Let's look at 3rd Infantry. It's got three, four dispatch points. It's going to say, I think we're going to spend four command points to buy two dispatch points, bringing us to six. You can do this at the beginning of every turn. And we're looking down there, the 27th armor is attached to them. And let's just say we're going to go on a sort of a limited offense. I'm going to purchase the 27th armored for two for this turn, purchase for this turn. In the infantry, things are kind of slow, so I'm going to purchase them for next turn at one each, and that's going to be another two dispatch points. I'm going to come to the 6th Airborne. If you look at that, they have a lovely command rating. So we want to burn up some of these command points because if they're picked soon, then they're going to lose command points because they'll be too much. So we got 11. Let's bring them down to 4. Is that right? No, let's bring them down to 3. That's 8, so we get to add 4 dispatch points, bringing us to 5. And in this one, I will take these two brigades, the 3rd and the 5th, and I will purchase them for this turn. 5 minus 4 is 1. 
And we're going to leave the sixth air landing out this turn. There's, usually there's not much for them going on the first day. So we won't buy that activation chip. Let The 27th armored is not on the map yet in the beginning. Let's look at the 50th. Um, two dispatch, five command. We're going to purchase two more dispatch there. Bring him to four. You almost always want your tanks operating every turn as the allies. Let's do that. And we will not activate the infantry this turn. I'm trying to not go to zero with them. 51st is not on the game yet. Let's look at the German situation. For whatever reason, uh, because this is messed up somehow, there's hardly anything for the... No, I'm sorry, 346 is even on the game yet. No wonder. They don't come until day two. So we have two dispatch and 15 command points for 352nd. That's plenty. Let's bring this down to three. 15 to three is 12 at six, bringing us to eight dispatch points. And we will buy both of our formations of Coafis and Maya for this turn. They each cost two. There were two of them. That's four. Eight minus four brings us to four dispatch points. And then we have seven sixteenth. Lots of command, but they usually need a lot of command points during the first part of, of, of the first game day. So let's drop this just down from 13 to 9. That gives us two dispatch points, and we'll spend those two dispatch points to buy the 736th Regiment for this turn. 12th Panzer has lots of command and very few units to begin with, so they're always simply buying everything. They have no prom, two dispatch points for their chit there. 21st Panzer has three formations they can activate. They have 17 command, one dispatch point. I'm going to drop them down to three. That's 14, half 14 is seven. Eight is what they have. We're definitely going to buy all those. 21st Panzer is usually quite busy the first day. And eight points, I spent six Three formations at two each is six, so eight brings it down to two. Panzer Lair is not on the map yet. So that is an example of how at the beginning of a turn, you purchase your activation chits for your formations in order to do things within this turn. There are n rarely, sometimes never, enough dispatch points to do everything you want. So you have to think through what your goals are for this turn, what your goals are for next turn. And it's always a good idea to save dispatch points if you can, because as you recall, if you roll the number of your dispatch points or less on that die roll to gain new dispatch points, you get an additional point. So in a sense, saving up dispatch points is a way to, is an investment to get you even more dispatch points through the die roll. Let us now take a look at how the whole flow of activations chits can go. This situation here is uh, the airborne landing that's in the far east of the whole battle, early in the first day. In fact, I think this is the night turn we're just looking at. And if we pull up the cup, yes, it is indeed the night turn. So we'll see that there aren't a whole lot of, of formations here. What's happened in this, this playthrough so far, here's the cup. It doesn't have any chits in it because only the 6th Airborne chits begin in the cup and then some German chits will enter the cup during the turn. It's sort of a special situation, but it also gives me a small number so I can deal with it. In, in this little situation, the green unit, the 5th Para Brigade, has already activated. They're finished for this turn, so we will put them over here to indicate that they're done. I will magnify the size so you can see it a little better. And now we pull. Well, first of all, let me deactivate everybody. We're going to pull a new chit and see what happens. So I'm pulling this one. This is the 6th Para Division. This is a divisional chit pull. So these guys are doing mainly non-combat moves, not a lot of combat stuff. In this particular game, they have to, the parachuters have, have stragglers everywhere and they have to roll for stragglers. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll do that in another video that describes how to make air landings and such. So we're going to just sort of pretend what happens happens and sort of skip doing actually doing stuff with the unit. Usually you will roll for command points and dispatch points at the beginning of the activation. For the first night turn, you only uh, roll command points. You don't get to roll dispatch points. And we will roll for them here, and that's a 5. So we're going to add their divisional rating, which is 12, to half of 5, round it down. So they're going to add 14. Let me pull out the um, pull this up. So we're just sort of playing this. They've already earned themselves down to 7 through burning them in the first two activations. 
12, 14 to 7, okay, that's 21, that's so what, we stop at 19, so we get 19 command points. If you would roll for dispatch points, we're just going to do it now for fun anyway, let's see how that works, we rolled a 9, ooh, that's bad, that means you automatically lose one dispatch point whenever you roll a 9, so that would be something you do at the very beginning of an activation. So we'll put these away for a minute, um, I'm not going to go through the whole turn right now, I'll do this kind of thing later. But the whole division will activate. Each of these counters gets to do things, very non combat -y things, for instance. And when they're all done, we will make sure they're all moved and get rid of the activation. Now, at this point, we will return it. And I'm sorry, we'll put it out here in the thing. And we add these German chits now to the coffee mug. Normally, they all start the turn of the coffee mug. This is some, a special rule for the very beginning of this. We will draw the next chit. This is a German direct command shit. Anybody that's in command for the Germans, the German can spend a command point and do something with it. However, um, as a special rule, there are no German leaders uh, on the map here in the very beginning, so nobody's in command, so they can't use the, demand, the direct command shit. Boom, that goes away. The next one is the 21st Panzer. First thing we'll do is roll for command points and dispatch points. As a special rule, they can't roll for dispatch points, and their command points is just a die roll. So we'll roll an 8, and they get 4. So we'll bring up the 21st, and they will add 4 to 3, and that's 7. So that's the number of command points that they have. Uh, they'll get to bring a leader on. I'm not going to go through all that right now. They can do things with their units. And we look around the situation. There's a few of them that are activated, etc. So these act these if we look back on the chart before, these can only be very limited things. They can't move into the fire zones. They can't move close to areas that the enemy can, can shoot. They can't fire, and they can't uh, close assault. However, if you spend a command point as their second action, they can do those sort of things, And then, which points out the temptation in this game. There's always a temptation to burn up command points to do stuff, even though you know that in the long run it's better to save them to purchase dispatch points. So if you can delay gratification, that will make you a better player of this game system. Fine, let's say they're done. We'll pull that shit there. The next shit is a direct command shit for the allies. Same thing, anybody in command can spend a command point to do one action. And because the 6th Airborne has so many command points, they often use the direct command shit. Not many other formations do, because usually you just don't have enough command points to do anything. The next chit, perhaps, is the 716th. So the German 716th Division will also roll for command points, and they will all do a divisional activation. That goes into the cup. The next unit is the third para, because I think, they're yes, they're the last formation pulled. They won't actually get to activate this turn. They'll have to wait till next turn. All these units will go back. The division, the direct commands will go back to the cup, and then the players will have a chance to purchase formation chits. All right, that was a lot of words. Hopefully this is the longest of the videos. It was to give you an overview, particularly of the maps counters, and especially how command and dispatch points work and how formation chits are put into the cup and pulled during the turn. And also gave you a quick introduction into unit actions. We're going to be talking a lot more about unit actions when we get into more details about what units actually do. That's it for this video. The next video in the series, video two, will be on movement.